Hello, and welcome to the Old Gazer channel. My name is Larry, and if you've watched any of the other videos uh, on this channel, you will no doubt be aware that this is a, a channel in which we try to offer uh, uh, advice, practical suggestions, practical recommendations, just practical information that's designed to help beginning amateur astronomers or inexperienced amateur astronomers make their way through the learning curve associated with a hobby of amateur astronomy. So that's what we're all about, and this video will be the latest installment uh, of that. And so welcome aboard. I'm glad you took the uh, the time to, uh, to, to drop by. Now let's move on to the video, which of course is going to be the third in a series about telescopes. If you've been with me all along, you will know that in the last two videos about telescopes, we have you know, talked about telescopes at a very high level. You know, we've talked about what a telescope is, what the parts of a telescope are, and what their functions are. We've talked a bit about the different kinds of telescopes, what the differences in those kinds are, and maybe what some of the advantages and disadvantages are. And then in the next video, we talked a little bit about some of the important metrics of a telescope. But we talked about things like uh, aperture, focal length, focal ratio, magnification, uh, those kinds of things. Now, what I was attempting to do uh, with those two videos was to try to sort of provide some guidance that would help you uh, uh, as you begin to seek uh, what telescope you might like to buy for your, quote, first serious telescope. Uh, and of course, it, it, that's going to depend largely on what you want to do with the hobby. If your primary interest is observing and viewing the, the moon and the planets, you would want a certain type of telescope, which would be better for that. If you're going to be viewing the dimmer deep sky objects and trying to perhaps image those, then another type, type of telescope would perhaps be better than that. So I've tried to, to, to uh, give you some indications about how all of that works and what types of telescopes are better for different types of viewing. And that was the purpose of all of those. Well, today I'm going to kind of bring all this together and I'm going to, a little bit later in the video, uh, I'm going to give you a specific product recommendation. I'm going to recommend a telescope for you that I believe is an almost perfect telescope for beginners or inexperienced amateur astronomers. Uh, now, that, of course, requires me to, to give this little disclaimer. Since I'm going to be recommending a specific product to you, it's important that I tell you this. Uh, I don't receive any form of compensation or acknowledgement of any kind whatsoever from makers of telescopes or sellers of telescopes or anybody else that has anything to do with the telescope uh, industry for mentioning or uh, recommending uh, uh, or suggesting one of their products. Uh, I have no motivation in recommending specific products other than the fact that I happen to think it's a good uh, product that will meet the needs of beginning amateur astronomers very well. And that's my sole motivation. Uh, so what I'm going to tell you about this telescope, the reason I'm going to recommend this telescope to you is based on my own personal opinion, my own thoughts, uh, uh, and, and I'm not motivated by any other factor uh, uh, of any kind whatsoever. So I just wanted to make that very clear up front. Uh, now, you may already have a telescope, many of you. Uh, you may have a very simple, inexpensive telescope. You may have already gone ahead and bought a, a more uh, uh, advanced telescope, perhaps one that has an equatorial mount. You may even have already bought a, a computerized go-to telescope that can find objects and track objects for you in the night sky. Uh, you may already have, you know, one of many different kinds of telescopes. And if you do, that's fine. Uh, uh, use the telescope that you have. Have fun with it. Learn what you can from it. Uh, and just go forward with that. And don't just rush out and, you know, buy the telescope that I'm about to recommend for you. Uh, if you've already got one, use that. And then later on, if you want to move up or change telescopes, you'll have the opportunity to do that. But if you've already got one, use it and have fun with it. Uh, I don't expect that everybody's going to run right out and buy the telescope that I'm going to recommend uh, for you in this video. 
that would be kind of a foolish expectation, and that's not what I would want. Uh, you, the telescope that you buy for your first telescope or perhaps your first serious telescope needs to be your telescope, one that you have selected. And what you need to do is not just take my recommendation, but check out some others. There are a lot of, of, of YouTube channels and other videos out there that, where they do reviews and make recommendations about a good first telescope. Many of these are, are done by very, uh, very good uh, very established amateur astronomers who can give you good information. There are other telescopes other than the one I'm going to recommend that will, will likely be a good first telescope for you, and you need to consider those as well. So get other opinions other than mine. I'm going to give you uh, the name of a resource here, uh, and uh, that resource would be a, a website uh, at www.scopereviews.com www.scopereviews.com. Now, this is a website that is uh, primarily put together and maintained by a gentleman named Ed Team, who you may already have seen uh, some information about. He's a very well-established, very well-known uh, amateur astronomer who has a, 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 a lot of credentials to, you know, establish him as a, a, as a very knowledgeable amateur astronomer. And by the way, he's got a great YouTube channel called Cool Stuff. And I would recommend that you watch those videos. They're very good. Uh, but he has a website called, you know, uh, scopereviews.com. And on there, you will find objective reviews of a whole lot of different telescopes. And uh, I would suggest that you use that resource in researching telescopes to help you come up uh, with, a, you know, a, a good purchase for your first telescope or your, quote, first serious telescope. So you need to consider all of those things and not just the recommendation that I'm going to give you. Uh, that being said, let me tell you why I'm going to recommend a specific scope to you today. Uh, if I were just beginning in the hobby, but if I knew uh, things about telescopes that I now know, then the telescope that I'm going to recommend to you is the one that I would buy. Okay, so that's why I'm recommending it to you. But of course, you'll want to make your own choice. And uh, that will be the best way to go about it. So do your research, look at other opinions, look at reviews of telescopes and so forth and make your own choice. But uh, let me give you some guidelines that I think are important to consider uh, when you're shopping for that first uh, telescope or that first real telescope, if you will, uh, regardless of which one you buy. What I'm about to tell you now is, are things that I really think you should consider. Uh, first of all, please don't buy one of these 30 or 40 or $50 department store telescopes. You know, these are the cheap, plastic, flimsy telescopes of the kind that you might find if you go down to a retail box store, a uh, department store, and, and if they happen to sell telescopes, this is more than likely the kind of telescope that you will find there. Uh, with very few exceptions, maybe almost without exception, I'm going to be very blunt here, those telescopes are pieces of junk. They will do nothing but frustrate you and disappoint you. And uh, they are also, in addition to being called department store telescopes, within the hobby, they are sometimes referred to as hobby killers because they have a tendency to do just that. People might buy one of these things. They'll try to look some, at some objects in the night sky. They'll find that so disappointing and so frustrating that they might say, well, if this is what amateur astronomy is all about, uh, this is not for me, uh, I'm out of here. And they'll walk away from the hobby before they've even ever given it a chance to show or really uh, to demonstrate what it's really all about. So avoid those kinds of telescopes. Now, uh, these are not just sold in department stores, of course, with the decline of retail box stores, physical stores. Uh, a lot of, uh, of these telescopes have moved to internet sales channels of various kinds, and there are so many different telescopes for sale out there. It can be overwhelming, which you may already have realized. Uh, so how can you avoid, how can you uh, recognize and avoid buying one of these hobby killing telescopes. Well, first of all, there's the price. You're not going to get a decent telescope for 30 or 40 or 50 dollars. 
Uh, just don't try to do that. Uh, second indication is look at the advertising. If on the box that these telescopes come in or in some other form of advertisement that you might see concerning these telescopes, you may see pictures, very, uh, very beautiful pictures of Jupiter and Saturn with its rings and maybe even a galaxy, spectacular close-up images of the moon. You might see pictures like that splattered all over the carton or the box that these telescopes come in, or you might read in their descriptions or advertising that you can see all of these things through that telescope. You're not going to be able to see things like that through one of these telescopes. You'll be lucky if you get a halfway decent view of the magnified moon. So if their advertising sounds too good to be true for a cheap telescope, it is, and you'll want to back away from that immediately. Another thing that you another way that you can avoid buying a telescope like this is to try to make sure that you buy your telescope from a reputable established uh, manufacturer uh, which has been in the business of manufacturing telescopes and has a proven track record and is well regarded. Uh, there the three biggest of these I'm uh, you know I'm not going to list everybody here and I hate to leave anybody out but the three most common established manufacturers of telescopes that uh, uh, are uh, uh, primarily uh, serve the consumer uh, amateur market are Orion, Celestron, and Mead telescopes. Now, there are more, and there are some good ones, but these are the big three. And if you buy a telescope from them, you can pretty safely assume that you're not going to be getting one of these flimsy, cheap, plastic, hobby-killing telescopes. So try to buy from a reputable manufacturer. Uh, and those are the kind of things that will help you avoid buying one of these uh, uh, junky, cheap, plastic, flimsy, hobby-killing telescopes. Now, you may already have one of those telescopes. And if you do, I certainly don't mean to insult you. Uh, if you have one of those, then use it as best you can. Try to have as much fun with it as you can. Try to learn from it as much as you can, but please be rapidly moving in the direction of buying yourself a better telescope. You owe it to yourself to do that, and you'll be very glad you did. So, first piece of advice, stay away from these pieces of junk, cheap, plastic, flimsy department store telescopes. Second thing that I would suggest is to keep the telescope that you buy as simple as possible. My presumption, again, is that most of you watching my videos are beginners or inexperienced amateur astronomers. And being such, you don't need to be distracted by too many unnecessary complexities at this stage of your career as an amateur astronomer. Keep it simple. Uh, you want a telescope that you can move around very easily. Uh, that you can rotate back and forth and, you know, uh, uh, move vertically in the sky to point it very easily at whatever part of the sky you want it to look at. Uh, and that just needs to be kind of second nature. You don't need to worry about the complexities uh, of a more advanced mount. Now, what I'm suggesting here, uh, for one thing, is that my advice, now a lot of people might disagree with me about this, but my advice is that amateur, beginning amateurs should stay away from equatorial mounts. Now, equatorial mounts are wonderful things. As a matter of fact, they are essential in pursuing other more complicated aspects of amateur astronomy, such as astrophotography. Uh, they are essential, and eventually, if you stay in the hobby, you may well wind up with an equatorial mount, but that's not what you want in the beginning, because learning to use one of those is a little learning curve there. You've got to polar align it. You've got to learn how to, to move it around, around the two axes, and you've got to learn how to balance it with counterweights and those kinds of things. Those are distractions that I would submit to you that a beginning amateur astronomer or an inexperienced amateur astronomy uh, don't uh, need to have to be dealing with. You need to be dealing with, you know, learning the fundamentals of amateur astronomy, learning the night sky, learning about telescopes, how to use that telescope to view objects in the sky, 
uh, how to learn how to view through a telescope, which as we've said before, is as much an art as it is a skill. Those are the kind of things that you need to be concerned with. That's where you are in the learning curve, and that's where you need to be, and you don't need the distractions of something like an equatorial mount. Uh, I also have had issues in the past of smaller telescopes not working well at all with equatorial mounts, but that's perhaps a you know, a subject for a different video. But my recommendation, my personal recommendation, which is not shared by all, you know, uh, uh, experienced amateur astronomers, is to stay away from an equatorial mount when buying your first telescope or your first serious telescope. I would also, for the same reasons pretty much, advise against buying one of these computerized go-to telescopes. These are the ones that will find objects for you in the night sky and track those objects across the sky. Uh, again, as a beginner, you don't need to be distracted by those kinds of things. Uh, not only does that require some experience to learn how to use those telescopes, not only are they more expensive, uh, considerably so, than most other kinds of telescopes, but uh, there is a danger that they might tempt you into bypassing uh, uh, getting involved with some of the things that you need to learn to become a, a legitimate, competent amateur astronomer. If you've got a telescope that will find things for you in the night sky, then that kind of obviates the need for you to, to learn about the night sky and how to find objects in the night sky. You don't really need to do that if the telescope is going to do it for you, but that's something that you don't need when you're a beginner. You need to learn that night sky. You need to learn where objects are in the night sky and how that changes with the seasons and all of those other things that are just a very fundamental step uh, along the path to passing through the learning curve associated with this hobby. So I would strongly recommend you keeping it very simple. Get a Dobsonian mount that just simply swivels around this way and, and uh, rotates up and down this way, or something called an alt-azimuth mount, which stands for altitude azimuth mount. And it's basically just a mount that, you know, pans back and forth this way and up and down this way so that you can move to whatever portion of the night sky that you want to move to very easily and really without even having to think about the mechanics of moving the telescope. That's what I recommend. Now, of course, if you've got a, a telescope, if you already have an equatorial mount or a go-to telescope, fine, use those. You're ahead of the curve. But I would urge you not to let those kinds of more advanced or complicated telescopes distract you from learning the fundamentals uh, of amateur astronomy. So I'll just put it that way. Okay, uh, those are some suggestions to you when you're you know, looking to buy your first telescope, certainly your first serious telescope. So now let's get to the point. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to make a specific recommendation to you here, and you've already heard the, the, uh, the thought process behind this recommendation, and you know that I'm not recommending a specific product out of any motivation of receiving any benefit from making such a recommendation. So here it is. I personally believe <clears throat> that there is a telescope out there that is almost a perfect choice for an amateur astronomer's first serious telescope. And that telescope is the Orion X-T8 Dobsonian uh, Reflecting Telescope. Okay, there it is. That's what I'm recommending for you. Now, this is a reflecting telescope. It has a parabolic mirror, which eliminates any concerns about spherical aberration. <clears throat> It has an 8-inch aperture, which is a lot of aperture. Uh, it will enable you to see a lot of objects in the night sky. It's a pretty big light gathering bucket, uh, 8 inches. Uh, these, uh, it's a 1,200-millimeter it's a millimeter focal length, and it's about an F6 uh, telescope. Uh, and uh, it comes, it's going to come with an eyepiece and a finder, uh, uh, probably a red dot finder and, and so forth. A, a good solid focuser, uh, and the mount that it goes on, the Dobsonian mount, is uh, sturdy and has some things that enable you to adjust the tension to, to help you get to that sweet spot to help you uh, move your telescope vertically up and down. Uh, there are a lot of serious 
uh, uh, experienced amateur astronomers who are with me in recommending this kind of telescope for your first serious telescope. And you can check me out if you if you want and verify that that's true. But uh, this is, thing is portable. You know, you can, if necessary, you know, take the telescope off the mount, move each piece separately outside. They go together very quickly, and then you can break them down and bring them back inside. So it's it hits that sweet spot between uh, uh, aperture, which is eight inches, and portability. It's very portable. And the other uh, aspect of that sweet spot, which we discussed in a previous video, of course, was cost. When you find a telescope that comes together and hits that sweet spot of aperture, portability, and cost, then you found a, a telescope that's probably going to work very well for you. So the thing that we haven't talked about here is cost. How much will an eight inch Orion XT Dobsonian uh, reflecting telescope cost? Well, the current retail price for that telescope on most of the big retail uh, channels is currently just a bit over $500, somewhere in the neighborhood of $520 or so. Now, uh, that may sound like a lot to some of you, but trust me, this is a lot of telescope for the money. An eight inch telescope, a very proven, time-honored quality telescope with an eight-inch aperture for around $500, more or less, is a good buy. As a matter of fact, it's probably the most cost-effective thing that you can find uh, out there. Uh, cost. So, 500 and some dollars for this telescope. What if you don't have $520? Well, you can move down to the Orion 6-inch Dobsonian reflecting telescope, which is very similar to the 8-inch, except, of course, it has a smaller aperture, which means you won't be able to collect as much light, but you'll still see, be able to see a lot of things in the night sky. Uh, it has the same uh, focal length, I believe, and, of course, it's going to be smaller and, therefore, even more portable than the 8-inch, and it has all of the other characteristics and the advantages of the 8-inch, except for the smaller aperture, uh, and, uh, you know, and uh, still a good telescope. And this one will cost you, instead of $520, about $400. What if you can't afford $400? Well, then you can step down to the Orion 4.5-inch Dobsonian reflector model, which I think they call uh, the Orion Star Blast 2. It's a 4.5-inch aperture. I think it has a focal length of 400 millimeters. Uh, it's an F4 scope. Uh, uh, and it's, despite its small size, it, it can uh, let you view and observe a lot of objects in the night sky. And you can have a lot of fun with it, and you can uh, 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 learn a lot from it. Uh, now, of course, it's smaller than the others. Uh, you, you won't be able to sit it on the ground. You'll have to sit it on a table or some other elevated flat surface in order to, to view through it. But it's a, it's a very time-honored, well-respected telescope. As a matter of fact, there are places that, uh, that uh, out there where, uh, where you can receive instruction, uh, uh, first-hand instruction uh, on site uh, with regard to amateur astronomy, you know, whether they're uh, sponsored by astronomy clubs or some other educational organization, observatories or whatever, you will a lot of uh, sometimes find telescopes for loan or rent in those venues. And one of the telescopes that you will most commonly find there will be this Orion uh, four and a half inch Star Blast uh, Adopsonian telescope. Uh, there are some libraries, believe it or not, uh, who, which loan telescopes in the same manner that they loan books. And those, tele those libraries will typically have this model as their loaner telescopes because of their uh, utility, their uh, their quality, their durability. Uh, you These telescopes are sort of ubiquitous. There are a lot of these small four and a half inch Orion Dobsonian telescopes around out there. And so if you can't afford one of the larger ones, this would be a good uh, starting telescope for a beginning amateur astronomer. The cost of this one approximately $200. I think I've seen in the last uh, recent past, uh, the price might have gone up to maybe 220 something in that range. But, and if that still seems like too much for you, you need to really think about that. 
Uh, if you're going to get into amateur astronomy and get an instrument that you can use to really have fun and enjoy the hobby, it's going to cost you a little bit. So if you if you need to uh, to beg, borrow, steal, or earn at least two hundred and twenty dollars to buy the four and a half inch model, if you've got the money or if you can get the money, then move up to either the six inch or preferably the eight inch telescope. That is an almost perfect telescope in my opinion, for a beginning amateur astronomer, an 8-inch Dobsonian reflecting telescope. So that's my recommendation. Uh, again, you don't have to accept that recommendation. There are many other good first telescopes out there, and you need to investigate those and research them and use uh, tools like uh, the, uh, the, the scopesreview.com uh, website, or scope reviews, uh, pardon me, and just, you know, check all of these things out before making your decision. It needs to be your telescope, one that you feel comfortable with, satisfied with, one that's fun and easy for you to use, and one that you can use uh, to help you work your way through the learning curve and, and put yourself on the path to becoming a legitimate, accomplished, competent amateur astronomer. So, that's my recommendation. Uh, not that that's the only choice, but again, if I were starting all over again, uh, but, uh, while knowing what I now know about telescopes, this is the telescope that I would buy as my first serious uh, beginner's telescope. You know, it's a good telescope, one that I recommend, but again, it's not the only good beginner's telescope out there, and you need to do your own research and make your own decision buy something that you're happy and satisfied with, that you can have fun with, and that you can learn from. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, that's going to, uh, to sort of conclude this series of three videos on uh, Telescopes 101, if you will. Uh, and we're going to move on to a little bit, uh, something a little bit different next time. I'm not going to tell you what we're going to talk about next time because I'm not exactly sure at this point. There's a number of different directions that we could go in from here, and I've just got to make that choice and move on. But uh, whichever way we go, I will have an, a new video up within a week or so, and I hope you'll, uh, you know, uh, join me uh, for that one. Uh, but for now, uh, let's call it quits. And uh, thank you so very much for taking the time to watch this. Uh, I sincerely hope this has been valuable to you. I hope, I hope I haven't overdone or oversold my recommendation. Uh, you just need to, uh, to take this video for what it's worth and realize that this is just one person's recommendation and you might want to evaluate some other possibilities. But uh, I hope that you have benefited from this video. That's my sincere hope. Uh, that's what it's all about. And so thank you very much for watching. And uh, so until next time, uh, let me just close, as always, by wishing all of you uh, clear skies and good seeing.